The Natural Resources Conservation Service's Plant Materials Program has roots in the disastrous Dust Bowl of the 1930s. The then Soil Conservation Service recognized that the best way to hold the nation's productive topsoil on site was to provide vegetative cover. Therefore, the Plant Materials Program was established to function as the plant experts for the NRCS. Plant Materials Centers develop, evaluate, and transfer planting technology to NRCS staff to improve recommendations for NRCS customers. All 25 PMCs around the nation are currently testing the adaptation areas of eight cool season cover crop species. Planning in our cover crop adaptation study where we're testing eight different cover crop species, each plant material center across the nation, all 25, are testing these exact same varieties. And on my left here we have uh, a Florida ecotype called Florida 401. This is cereal rye. And on my right I have one called Wheeler, which is also a cereal rye. What we're testing in this study is to see what these cover crops do um, over the course of the growing season. Some of them have very different characteristics and they're different for each cover crop purpose. The cover crops protect the soil from erosion during winter rainfall events, as well as build soil organic matter and limit weed growth. Cover crops are crops planted behind annual crops, particularly uh, row crops and vegetables. Uh, they are used to manage uh, soil moisture, soil erosion, soil fertility, soil health, the diversity in, in, in plants. Uh, there's a, so many different reasons that we plant cover crops. We're gonna talk a little bit about cover crop mixes. And to do a robust mix, which means we have three functional plant groups, that would be your grass, your broadleaf, and your legume. Here in Mississippi, we can start with what we're calling the Mississippi mix. And that would be 50% of the mix in cereal rye, 25% in daikon radish, and in this case, 25% crimson clover. And that, at those appropriate seeding rates, will run you about $20 an acre. Now what this does is it allows for a robust um, production of nitrogen, so we're talking about the, um, the clover, and also it allows um, nutrients to be caught from the previous crop with the, the rye and the radish. The Jamie L. Whitten Plant Materials Center in Coffeyville, Mississippi, along with the other 24 NRCS plant materials centers around the nation is evaluating different cover crop species. This nationwide study is called the National Cover Crop Adaptation Trial. The goal of this study is to refine cover crop recommendations so that the NRCS field staff can provide more localized cover crop recommendations to landowners and producers. Different varieties of the same species called cultivars may be better adapted to solve common resource concerns than other cultivars. When radishes are actively growing, of course the root system looks like this. And they're down in the, in the soil profile. They can go even, even, you know, 10 to 12 inches deep, some of them. But most of them will go somewhere at 10 inches and pull nutrients up to the top of the surface in the top four inches. So they look like this when they're act actively growing. And then when they die, either by winter kill or by burning down herbicides, they kind of look like this, as you can see. And they really decompose very fast and leave those nutrients up in the top profile so the succeeding crop can use them. The root system is still living, actually, and has not decomposed yet. But uh, we are expecting for it to begin to decompose, as you can see, from the top down already. Well, these mixes actually uh, work very well in cover crop systems. For questions about cover crops and how they can benefit your farm, contact your local NRCS office.